Welcome back for another video here on my Vape Style Journalism channel and for the second video of this week my name is Vape Style so in this video I am going to be giving you my review of Ghosts Series 4 and going to be giving you all of my thoughts on that but also thanks to everyone who has helped me now reach 31 subscribers and now that I have reached 31 subscribers on this channel I am now on my way up to my first milestone goal of reaching 50 if you can help me get to 50 subscribers I will host a live Q&A where you can ask me any questions you want to as long as nothing is extremely nasty and yeah if you want to post me questions you can do so in the comment section if it is up or over at my com website so even if you want to ask me questions about accessibility what else i'm hoping to do in the future and anything else just make sure to pop it on over there all of the links for all of that in the, is in the description but now let's get straight into the video <laughs> Ghosts is a comedy on the BBC created by six of the actors who starred in Horrible Histories. Larry Rickard, Matt Bateson, Jim Horrock, Martha Hoy Douglas, Ben Wilbund and Simon Thornaby. And it's first aired on the BBC in April 2019. The storyline follows a young couple, Harrison and Mike Cooper, who have inherited a mansion only to discover that it is haunted by ghosts. The ghosts originally feel quite threatened by the new humans moving in, much because Harrison and Mike plan to make money out of it maybe turning the building into a hotel and as such decided it would probably be a better idea to kill them. Unfortunately, Harrison ends up being the unlucky person who is chosen to be sacrificed and while she is leaning out of the window, she's pushed out of it by Julian the ghost of a toiletless toy MP who died on the toilet. For this reason, Harrison is currently the only living character who can see the ghosts. The show recently finished its fourth series, which ran from the 23rd of September until the 28th of October. And with C's Button House now open for business with the launch of Addison and Mike's new gate house. And in this, I'm going to give each of the episodes a summary while giving my views on it all as well. In episode one, Addison and Mike welcome their first guests to their new B and B with high hopes of getting a glowing review. Meanwhile, 
Thomas is perplexed but secretly thrilled by the sudden attention he's getting from the plague ghost, who for the last few months have been admiring the portrait that Alison did of him in last year's Christmas special, and who are now affording him celebrity status. Unfortunately, Thomas believes all of this attention is because the play ghosts are interested in his art and poetry. With the captain, his sudden is definitely not the case. What I liked about this episode was how we saw Kitty acting as a PA to Thomas and how we find out more about the friendship that they have with each other as well as how at one point in the episode we saw Robin acting as a bouncer or like a bouncer when he tells the play ghosts that they need to line up but unfortunately, while I really want to continue praising the show, I have to also give my dislikes. One of the things I disliked was when Alison and Mike are trying to find out information about their guests, while Julian and and they are eavesdropping on the guests as well. Personally, I feel like this takes quite a bit away from Julian's usual character, which I don't think we get to see a lot of, other than at the beginning and the end of the episode. And keep in mind that next to Thomas, Julian is probably one of my all-time favourite characters on the show because he never feels bad about anything that he does. So I think the way that Alison and Mike also want to know information about the guests takes away from that a lot. And I would have also liked to see an end to the captains. I told you they weren't interested in your art poem to Thomas at the end. But if the point is that literally captain is more, is less into poetry than Thomas. Yeah, I get where they were going with that. Episode 2 sees Mary telling Julian about her journey of finding self-discovery after she was killed in the witch trials, as well as how she found her voice alongside another witch trial victim called Annie. Meanwhile, Thomas decides to go cold turkey on his Alison addiction after she gets annoyed at his attempts to flirt with her, but he enlists help from Pat for in order to keep him on track. Elsewhere, old friends of Mike check into the gatehouse and agree to share this in secret of their success until Alison decides to scale them off and the captain phoned by a change to his daily routine spends time with Kitty he teaches him how to live in the moment this episode also shows us Alison trying to get some spare time to spend with Robin and Lady B remembers some of her lost friends or dead animals that she had while alive. Some of the things I disliked about the episode 
but which I kind of understand they had to do is how much was not shown or revealed about a couple of events or what was involved in Mary's death story, meaning that we still have to fill quite a bit in regarding her death. But as I said, I more than understand this, given that ghost sales half an hour before the watershed. However, the things that I liked were the structure of how Thomas going cold turkey on Alison is told in a way that is similar to if someone is recovering from drugs or trying to get off drugs. And I also like how we saw Pat and the captain acting as the parents to Kitty and Thomas, even if they were born generations apart. And another thing that I liked was Alison wanting to make time to spend with the ghosts, which we normally haven't seen before especially not in series one, two or three. In episode three, the ghosts are shocked by how much Addison has just told them off. The most she ever has. And for Mary, the only one who didn't do anything wrong, they agree to come up with a creative way of getting back in Alison's good books to show how truly sorry they are, which may involve a couple of jokes, a message of being closer together, and a whole load of sing song. Meanwhile, Alison and Mike have a last minute cancellation at the gatehouse which after the stressful morning that they've had already, they decide to take up because they need a relaxing day. But they soon discover that a relaxing day off is far more challenging than it looks, especially in a house that seems to be cursed with extremely bad luck. Out of all of the episodes, this one is by far my favourite for a couple of different reasons. We've seen Alison getting annoyed before, but not to the point where she's completely had it and refuses to speak to any of the ghosts. But it was fun seeing her like that in this episode, which I don't think we've seen since the second episode of series one. Some other things I liked included how Mary was shown in this episode as if she was the good child who chose not to get involved with the discussions that the others were having about what the best way to say sorry was. Plus, I also liked how we got to see a bit of how Mike could be argued in this bit to be an embarrassing ghost dad when he ran past literally naked while the ghosts are rehearsing. But the best bit out of the entire episode, in my opinion, is the soy song, which has Julian controlling a synthesizer, a melody performed by every ghost for Mary, and a rap from Thomas as if you do not want anything better. The only thing 
negative about the episode that I would like to say, however, is that it would have been nice seeing what initially made Addison lose it, instead of hearing about everything in the past tense, but with only 30 minutes to play with. I understand why that may have been deleted. Episode 4 is one of the more shocking episodes in the series. As Budden Hoist is dealt a major blow after one of the ghosts gets sucked off, leaving most of them needing emotional support, but especially Kitty, who looks to pass for moral support, which he is more than happy to oblige but ends up in even more deep water when he ends up trying to offer her words of comfort. Meanwhile, Mike realises there have been some cross wires over an event booking that sees him having to host a children's birthday party for two little girls. So some of the things that I likely liked about this episode, but of course it's difficult to come up with words, is the shock that followed one of the ghosts getting sucked off, which I am not spoiling, but you can check Twitter if you want to know who it is. Which had me hypothetically holding my breath, obviously, while laughing at most parts, but feeling like I wanted to cry by the end. I laughed especially at a couple of Pat's attempts to not make the news too hard for Kitty, as well as at Mike, who mistakes an eight and seven year old's birthday party for an 87 year old birthday party and forgets to tell the entertainer he has booked about the update with the entertainer arriving and not realising that he has to entertain children. Some other moments that were especially funny when Thomas ends up talking about himself instead of the ghost that has moved on, when Addison tries to ask him to write a eulogy, which ends extremely badly, and when Addison ends up saying the worst thing you could ever say to any parent at a children's birthday party that you have to treasure the people in your life while they are precious to you because they could be gone the next minute. But while I did realise that a lot of the portion of the episode was emotional, I also noticed the look on Alison's face while the children's party was taking place. So do we think it's possible that we could be seeing an announcement about Baby Cooper soon? And will that happen during or after this year's Christmas special? In episode 5, Alison discovers that her and Mike's neighbour, Barclay, has been scheming behind their backs and plans to threaten the success of their guest house business. For Alison, this means all out war, which she enlists help from Julian for to help decide on what she should do next. Meanwhile, the ghosts discover a new ghost on the field next to them, called Maddox, who they make a rotor to visit. 
can make it attempt to mix things up for future guests by secretly investing in some not so cheap equipment that Alison wouldn't approve of. I liked seeing the return of Barkley by Trekford, who is played in the series by Jeff McGovern. We haven't seen since the beginning of series three, and yet again can be described as the worst neighbour ever. I find myself love hating him even more, and I also like how we got to find out a wee bit more about what sort of a relationship Alison and he have with each other, which, although he has appealed in series two and three, I don't honestly think we've actually seen much of since series one. But it was also nice seeing Alison taking some of Julian's advice on how to play the blackmail game, which helped show a more fun side to her character instead of the more serious parts. In the last episode, at least of the time that I am recording, before the Christmas special, Addison and Mike received some exciting news about their gate house, but tension soon arise after a pop of a bear appears on the scene, but Mike doesn't want to throw out and is rather quite pleased about, as is Lady B. But Alison and Robin are less passionate about. But it also comes clear that other characters are as well. Meanwhile, Pat and Thomas learn about veganism, which inspires them to try and force Alison into throwing all meat out of the house. While Julian is confronted by a hard trick that he is determined to prove everyone wrong about and Kitty attempts to adopt a new way of speaking. So as someone who prefers and favours the slightly more unrealistic relationship between Thomas and Alison over Mike and Alison, Come on, do not judge me. I liked how the beginning did start and where we did end up seeing the areas on which Harrison and Mike do disagree with each other. But as the episode went on, I did begin to feel nervous. Robin was so funny as ever in this episode especially in relation to his dislike of the bear pro, but seeing him distressed by the bear and other parts did make me worry. Each time the prop was moved, I got even more worried, especially when it sent a light like thing over towards the portrait of Humphrey sort of like it was burning, which even makes Humphrey's head wake up. My anxiety levels went even higher when only Mike came along, who of course can't see the ghosts, but after he moved the prop, I felt better. However, the episode does have lighter moments as well such as when Kitty changes the way she speaks after talking to Julian and others struggle to understand her 
and her Jillian reacts to finding out that the captain calls him morally bankrupt, as do apparently everyone else. Also, it was extremely entertaining finding out how Robin died and why he can control lights. So overall, I think series 4 of Ghosts is an emotional roller coaster that is well worth watching, full of constant twists that really affect each and every character in the show. There's moments you laugh at, moments you feel shocked and sad at, moments you'll be happy about, and moments you'll be curious about. I don't think it's as much narrative driven compared to series 3. But each of the episodes does have a story to go along with it, as does the entire series, I think, in relation to it being about Alison and Mike having a gatehouse business that they are setting up. That will make you feel curious about everything that awaits the characters in the future. Even the parts I've described feeling disappointed about are easy to ignore and I do think it is a brilliant series overall. Anyway, thanks for watching the video if you have stayed along to the end of this and I will also be uploading many reviews of this as I have done with the Dairy Go series as well so please keep an eye out for them. I will be back next week with a political post and update on what is next for Northern Ireland's politics at the minute as well as maybe getting back into a wee bit of the tourism reviews that I still need to do. Hope you enjoyed anyway and this is Phoebe's now off. See you next week when my upload schedule should be back to normal.